Greetings, Pokey people. Ichigo90 here, and today we are going back to Kanto to solo Pokemon Yellow with its starter Pikachu. The rules for this challenge are very simple. We will only battle with our starter Pikachu. We will not use items in battle. And that's all there is to it. So we go, we try to take the Pokemon on the table and get pushed out of the way by our rival. Uncool. However, Professor Oak takes pity on us and gives us a Pokemon that we would not otherwise get. Which is pretty cool. We go ahead and we name the Pikachu Small Ant. I don't know why. It just seemed like a cool idea at the time. But then our rival decides he wants to fight us. So now we have a decision to make. Because how we do this battle will determine how this Eevee evolves later. And to give Small Ant the best chance possible at finishing the league, we want it to evolve into a Vaporeon, which means we have to lose this battle on purpose. And once that's done, we go and fight against Brock. And Brock took an annoying amount of time. Because we have to grind this Pikachu up to level 18 in order to win. Because the strategy here is to use double team to raise its evasion because its defense does not exist. And then attack with quick attack over and over again. And that means we have to be at a high enough level that quick attack does not run out of PP before the Onyx runs out of HP. And that is something that happened at level 17, which means that level 18 is the lowest level Pikachu can win against Brock without help. Um, another thing is Onyx likes to use Bide. Bide in Gen 1 does not check for accuracy, meaning it will always hit, and it does double the damage that was done to the user while Bide was in effect. Which means that any time Onyx uses Bide, we have to use a non-damaging move until it unleashes energy. But either way, we won. We defeated Brock on the seventh attempt, which means we can now go over to Mount Moon. And a really cool thing that I had forgotten about that happens in yellow is that you are not just fighting against Team Rocket. No, you are fighting against Team Rocket. Jesse, James, and Meowth. However, they are just as threatening in this game as they are in the anime. And I say that after I defeated them with just one HP remaining. But now that we've taken care of them, we can go take care of Misty. And while Misty's Stargew's Bubble Beam is something you still need to watch out for, she decides to use an X Defend, which means we defeated her on the very first try, and then received Thunder Thunderbolt, which will be very useful for the remainder of this game. Having taken out Misty, we can go fight rival number two, 
and we can actually fight him seriously this time. He opens up with a Spiro, which after I finish rearranging my moves to put Thunderbolt on top, will go down to a single Thunderbolt. Next he will use his Sand Shrew, which we will just have to quick attack to death. It only took about four hits, but the rest of his Pokemon are pretty easy. Rattata goes down to Thunderbolt. He sends out his Eevee, which survives, which goes down to Thunderbolt. Okay. After that, we get the SS ticket from Bill and go straight to rival number three. He again opens Spiro, which goes down to Thunderbolt. His Rattata goes down to Thunderbolt. Then he sends out his Sandshrew, which goes down to the Seismic Toss that we replaced Quick Attack with. And then Eevee survives Thundershock once. Now that we've defeated Rival 3, we can get Cut and go to Lieutenant Surge. Lieutenant Surge in this game has only one Raichu, which if he had used a second Mega Punch instead of Growl, would have won. But hey, first try victory is a first try victory. Then we can go over to the Rocky Tunnel, and then Erica. Yeah, this gym is great. It's full of women. Yes, sir. I agree. This gym is great for that reason. Erica's Pokemon resist our electric type moves, but since Seismic Toss is a set damage move, we just use that over and over again. Erica's ace in this game is also Gloom instead of Vileplume for some reason, which makes it even easier. And now that we've done that, we can go over to the Rocket Game Corner and take out the Guard, who will then lead us to Team Rocket. And they are just as threatening here as they were back in Mount Moon. All of their Pokemon go down in just one hit, which means we can now fight Giovanni. And Giovanni is a little more worrying because his Pokemon not only resist our electric moves, they are immune to it. But they go down easily to Seismic Toss. And then Persian goes down easily to Thunderbolt. Which means, rival number four. He opens with a Fero, which goes down to Thunderbolt. And then follows up with Vulpix which after surviving one Thundershock goes down to a second one. Magnemite goes down to Seismic Toss. Sandshrew also goes down to Seismic Toss because that's the only move we can hit it with. And then Eevee manages to survive Thundershock, but only once. After that, we climb the rest of the tower and face off against THE Team Rocket. They send out Meowth, which goes down to Thunderbolt, then Arbok, which also goes down to Thunderbolt, and finish it off with Weezing, which gets finished off with Thunderbolt. After go away, Gasly. After that, we talk to Mr. Fuji, we get the Poke Flute, which lets us go down to Fuchsia City to fight Koga. Koga leads off with a Venonat, which goes down to Thunderbolt. This falls up with a Venonat, which goes down to Thunderbolt. Falls out with a Venonat, which survives Thunderbolt and hits us with Psychic. After taking it out with Thundershock, the Venomoth manages to survive and use Double Team and an X Attack and Toxic. And then after using the X attack, he completely ignores it and uses a special move, which takes us out. So we go to the fighting dojo to get some experience. And they don't give us a badge, but do offer us to use a Pokemon that we really don't want. So let's go fight rival 5, 
His Sand Slash is annoying, but goes down to a couple of seismic tosses. Magneton resists Thunderbolt and confuses us. But we break through and take it out with a second Thunderbolt. After that, Ninetales survives a Thunderbolt, but not a Thundershock. The Kadabra goes down to Thunderbolt, and the Vaporeon survives Thundershock, but only once. Which means we're ready to fight Boss Rocket after the Team Rocket. They open up with Weezing this time, which goes down to Thunderbolt. They follow it up with Arbok, which goes down with Thunderbolt. And Meowth goes down to Thunderbolt. Which means it's time to go and face Boss Rocket, also known as Giovanni. And Giovanni opens with Nidorino, which goes down to Thunderbolt. Persian still goes down to Thunderbolt. And the Rhyhorn, we have to use Seismic Toss. And now he has Nido Queen, which uses Body Slam and hits us with Paralysis. Which ultimately doesn't matter because he didn't attack after that. Now we can go and face Sabrina. The Abra we can use Seismic Toss on because it's not a threat at all. The Kadabra, however, we don't have that luxury because it uses Psychic, which does more than I would like. The Alakazam is even more scary, but it chooses not to attack for some reason and goes down to a couple of moves. Now we can go and face Koga again. The first two Venonats still go down to just one attack. The third Venonat naturally goes down to just one attack because we're at a higher level now and the Venomoth has become a two hit KO. And after that we go get Surf and fight against Blaine. Ninetales is a little scary because of the confusion but it goes down to a couple of Thunderbolts. Rapidash also goes down to just a couple of Thunderbolts. Our K9 comes so much closer than I would like to taking us out, but it too goes down to a couple of Thunderbolts. Giovanni took an annoying amount of time, and I had to do him twice. The only strategy Pikachu has in here is to take out the Doug Trio as soon as possible and then set up six double teams against the Persian. However, the Persian also knows double team and it has Slash. So it, it, if it hits us with anything then that puts us in range to be taken out by every Pokemon that follows it, assuming they can hit us too, which did happen a lot. However, assuming Double Team does its job, they all go down to Seismic Toss, and then we can go fight the rival. Sandslash still has us using Seismic Toss, and the Execute, we're going to set up a couple of double teams. He hits us with Leech Seed. That's problematic. But eventually we do take it out with Thunderbolt. The Magneton we also take out with Thunderbolt. And then the Ninetales tries to hit us with Quick Attack, but we've set up double teams, so it can't. The Dabra survives Thunderbolt, but then sets up Reflect, okay. And the Vaporeon survives Thunderbolt, but then misses with Hydro Pump, which means we can go to Victory Road and the Elite Four. Starting with Lorelei. Now, Lorelei's Pokemon, all but one of them are Water-type although they are all ice type, 
but because most of them are water type, we actually don't have that many problems against Lorelei. Jinx is an issue, but it's not a big one. And then Lapras goes down to Thunderbolt, which means it's time to face Bruno. The first Onyx goes down to a couple of Seismic Tosses, and then the Fighting Mon all go down to Thunderbolt. That's not a problem. The second Onyx also goes down to a couple of Seismic Tosses after using an X Defend for some reason. The Machamp survives Thunderbolt, but then goes down to Thundershock. And where we really hit problems in the Elite Four is against the Agatha La... No, I'm just kidding. Obviously, it was against Lance. Agatha's Pokemon all go down easily to our Electric-type moves. Even if it does take a couple of hits for most of them, that's not a big deal. Gengar survives Thunderbolt and hits us with Confusion, but in the end that doesn't matter and it goes down to another Thunderbolt. Now Lance, the Gyarados is not really worth talking about. I did spend some time wondering if I should use Thunderbolt or Thundershock. I used Thundershock and it went down in one move. But then Dragonair hit us with Hyper Beam. And then, the second Dragonair survived Thunderbolt and hit us with another Hyper Beam, which means we're back at Lorelei. Dugong goes down to Thunderbolt. Cloyster goes down to Thunderbolt. Slowbro survives... No, it didn't. Okay. Jinx, however, did survive Thunderbolt, but not Thundershock. Lapras did not survive Thunderbolt. Okay, which takes us back to Bruno. We hit Onyx with Seismic Toss, it hits us with Slam, that's no problem. Hitmonchan goes down to Thunderbolt, Hitmonlee goes down to Thunderbolt. The second Onyx goes down to Seismic Toss after another pointless X defend. And then Machamp goes down to Thunderbolt, which takes us back to Agatha. The Gengar survives Thunderbolt and hits us with Confusion, which only lasts for one turn, but then it hits us with Confusion again. Thunderbolt takes it out. Golbat survives Thundershock. We snap out of Confusion, take it out with another Thundershock. Haunter survives a Thunderbolt, then goes down to Thundershock. Arbok survived Thundershock and paralyzed us. And then she switches out to Gengar for some reason. It tries to take us down with Psychic but fails, then uses Dream Eater for some reason. And then it and Arbok both go down. Lance, the Gyarados is still not worth talking about. What? The Dragonair, however, used Hyper Beam again. We use Double Team on our free turn, then take it out with Seismic Toss. The second Dragonair survives Thunderbolt, then uses Ice Beam, which did nothing. We take it out. Aerodactyl survived a Thundershock, and then got taken out by a second one. Dragonite hit us with Blizzard. Thundershock is not doing much. And then another Blizzard does the job. Lorelei again. I debated using Thunderbolt or Thundershock. I chose Thunderbolt. Cloyster went down to Thunderbolt, but it was a critical hit. Slowbro, same thing. Jinx, we used Thunderbolt. It's a Five. We used Thundershock, it went down. Lapras, we used Thundershock, it went down, but again, a critical hit, so I don't know if that mattered. 
Onyx, we use Seismic Toss, it uses Screech, we use Seismic Toss again, it goes down, Hitmonchan, we use Thunderbolt, it went down, Hitmonlee, we use Thunderbolt, it went down, Onyx, we used Seismic Toss, it takes two hits, and Machamp, we easily took it out again, which takes us to Agatha, which is still barely even worth mentioning. Again, the Pokemon just go down so easily. She does weird switches. She uses Dream Eater on Wide Awake Pokemon. What is she doing in the Elite Four? The confusion ultimately doesn't even matter. Gengar goes down, which takes us back to Lance and the real threat, which is its his Dragonite. The Dragonair, we are surviving, that we can reliably get past them with Seismic Toss. Aerodactyl, we can reliably get past with Thunderbolt. But the Dragon Knight survives Thunderbolt, hits us with Blizzard again, and that does so much. But this time we take him out. That's it. We've beaten the Elite Four. What else is there to do? And we have to go and fight J Rose. The Sand Slash hits us with Earthquake, and my god, that does a lot. The Alakazam, we use Thunderbolt, it survives but does nothing, then it goes down. The Exeggutor, our best move against it is not doing enough. And now we're asleep, and it takes us out. Back to Lorelei, Dugong goes down to Thundershock, Cloyster goes down to Thundershock, Slowbro survived Thundershot. I guess that critical hit did matter. Jinx goes down to Thunderbolt. Lapras goes down to Thunderbolt. And back to Bruno. We use Seismic Toss and it uses Dig. Okay, we'll use Double Team. It misses. Hitmonchan goes down to Thundershock. Hitmonlee goes down to Thundershock. Onyx, a couple of double teams, a couple of seismic tosses, it's not a problem. Machamp goes down to Thunderbolt, and Agatha is still Agatha. She is so easy to defeat. Her first two Pokemon don't even put up a fight. The Haunter survives and uses Confuse Ray, but then it uses Dream Eater, even though I'm not asleep. Arbok goes down in one attack. The second Gengar takes two attacks, or three. Fine, we'll just use another Thunderbolt. That's fine. Gyarados goes down to Thunderbolt. Dragonair, we're going to use Seismic Toss again. Bubble Beam does nothing. That's fine. Aerodactyl. We'll use Thunderbolt. Then Dragonite survives Thunderbolt. Its attack misses. Then it goes down. So we've defeated the Elite Four again. We're back to the champion. And this time Sand Slash. After surviving Seismic Toss, hits us with Earthquake and sends us back to Lorelei. That's fine. It survived Thundershock this time. Okay. The Cloyster did not, however. The Slowbro survived on a sliver of health and then used Amnesia. The Jinx managed to survive Thundershock and then puts us to sleep. That's great. Sleep is really annoying. Then it uses Thrash. Takes us down to 9 HP. 
and the Lapras goes down to Thunderbolt. So now we're back to Bruno. It's the same strategy as any other time. Seismic toss the Onyx. The Hitmonchan goes down to Thundershock. The Hitmonlee goes down to Thundershock. The second Onyx, we're going to just do the same thing, and so is he. And the Machamp goes down to Thunderbolt. And then Agatha thinks she has a chance. Gengar manages to survive a Thunderbolt, then uses Mega Drain. Golbat goes down to Thundershock. Haunter manages to survive Thundershock, but uses Confuse Ray. And then goes down without actually doing anything. Arbok survives only once. The second Gengar survives, uses Psychic, then goes down, which means we're back to Lance. The Gyarados is not even worth mentioning. The Dragonair survives, uses Hyper Beam. It's not doing as much, so we use Double Team on our free turn. The second Dragonair, we use Seismic Toss again. The Aerodactyl, we use Thunderbolt, it goes down. Dragonite is still surviving our Thunderbolts in the most disrespectful way possible. And now we are getting past Lance pretty reliably. That's good. Now back to the rival. Sandslash, we, we're going to set up a double team, and it still hits us with Earthquake, so we use Seismic Toss. And Sandslash goes down. Alakazam, we use Thunderbolt. It manages to hold on. Another one takes it out. Executor, we still don't have a good answer to. And we are punished for it with a Leech Seed. Ninetales manages to survive. It gets paralyzed, but then takes us out with quick attack, so we're back to Lorelei. This time Dugong goes down to a Thundershock. Cloyster goes down to a Thundershock. Slowbro survives a Thundershock and uses Psychic. That does more than I would like, but it's not the end of the world. Jinx goes down to Thunderbolt. Lapras goes down to Thundershock. Okay. And now it's back to Bruno. The Onyx is still a two-hit KO with Seismic Toss. It uses Slam, which does almost nothing. Hitmonchan goes down to Thundershock. Hitmonlee still goes down to Thundershock. The second Onyx, same story. Two Seismic Tosses and it goes down. Machamp is going down almost to Thundershock, but it didn't do anything, so back to Agatha. The Gengar holds on from a Thunderbolt and then uses Lick, which paralyzes us, which is not ideal. It means her Pokemon will start to outspeed us, but they still go down. Agatha is still Agatha after all. Haunter uses Dream Eater on a Wide Awake Pokemon for some reason and goes down to a couple of Thundershocks. This time Arbok hits us with Wrap, which is annoying, but it doesn't do much, and it goes down. The second Gengar uses Confuse Ray, which is just as irritating, but then uses Dream Eater on a not sleeping Pokemon. It takes us into the red health, but then goes down. Lance's Gyarados is still not worth talking about. The Dragonair is still a two-hit KO with Seismic Toss. It uses Hyper Beam, so we set up a double team. That Hyper Beam is not as scary as it once was. And the second Dragonair doesn't manage to do anything. Aerodactyl. It goes down to Thundershock now. Dragonite still holding on from a Thunderbolt. 
but it goes down a thundershock shortly after. Which means we're back to the rival again. Sandslash uses Earthquake again, that is still so much damage. Alakazam, Thunderbolt, it hangs on, it uses Psybeam, that is not what we want to see. Executor, we still don't have an answer to. So we set up a couple of double teams and use Seismic Toss and then get taken out by Barrage. Lorelei, this time her Dugong survives Thundershock, but the Cloister doesn't. Slowbro does not survive. Jinx goes down to Thunderbolt. Lapras goes down to Thundershock again. Now onto Onyx. Seismic Toss, Screech for some reason, Seismic Toss, and it goes down. Hitmonchan, Thundershock. Hitmonlee, Thundershock. Onyx, Seismic Toss, X Defend, okay. Seismic Toss, and it goes down. Machamp, Thunderbolt, and it goes down. Agatha. Thunderbolt the Gengar, it hangs on, but then does nothing. Golbat, Thundershock, it goes down. Haunter, Thundershock, it does about half health, and then Haunter does nothing. Arbok, hits us with Wrap again, and then dies to Thundershock. Gengar, Thunderbolt, it hangs on, Thundershock, it's dead. Agatha tells us we must be something special, but the truth is she is nothing special. It's 17 hours. Gyarados, not even worth talking about. Dragonair, Seismic Toss, Hyper Beam, Double Team during our free turn, just like last time. Seismic Toss, Seismic Toss, Hyper Beam again, Double Team during our free turn. Seismic Toss, and the second Dragonair is down. Aerodactyl, Thunderbolt, and it's out. Dragon Knight, Thunderbolt, and it is still being so disrespectful with how much it survives. But it misses its attack, and we are back again to our rival, the champion. Sandslash. We're just going to go straight for the Seismic Toss, and then its attack misses. Okay, that's nice. Alakazam, Thunderbolt. It hits us with Psychic, but that doesn't do nearly as much as the Sand Slash was doing. And then it goes down to Thunderstruck. Executor, we're just going to go for Seismic Toss. It hits us with Barrage. That does nothing. It survives a second, but not a third. Ninetales. Hits us with Quick Attack, we hit it with Thunderbolt, followed by Thundershock, it goes down, Magneton. We're going to hit it with Seismic Toss, it hits us with Swift, that does nothing, that's fine. And then, Vaporeon. We hit it with Thunderbolt, and it goes down, proving that we made the right decision all the way back in Pallet Town when we fought him in Oak's Lab. Folks, this run took me 23 in-game hours. That's not even including all the time I lost when I had to reset after beating Giovanni the first time. For all of Pikachu's iconicness, for all of Pikachu's adorableness, its defenses simply don't exist. And that meant we had to do a lot of grinding to get through this run. Now I do have one more run planned after this. I'm going to go to Fire Red and defeat the Kanto region in Gen 3 using a Paris. So I will see you there. And until then... This is Ichigo90, and I am blasting off again.